Hi guys, in today's video we're going to learn how PET imaging helps us find cancers in the body. Be it genetic or acquired, tumors are abnormal growths that begin in an area of DNA damage. Normal cells in the body divide, live, and die in a tightly regulated process that ensures our tissues and organs last throughout our lives. However, the genetically damaged cells of cancers often lose that regulatory control, dividing randomly and frequently to form a tumoral mass or lump. To support this type of unregulated growth, the tumor cell's metabolism is upregulated, requiring a significant amount of energy when compared to the normal surrounding tissues. The increased metabolic activity of a lot of cancers is a key feature of tumor cells that can help us distinguish them from the normal surrounding tissues. Using a device called a PET-CT scanner, we can actually see and document this increased metabolic activity in the tumor cells. The preferred energy source for tumors is glucose, the basic carbohydrate consisting of a hexagonal carbon-oxygen backbone with five hydroxyl side chains. If we substitute one of the hydroxyl side chains with a radioactive fluorine atom called F18, we produce fluorodeoxyglucose, also known as FDG, or more appropriately, 18-fluorine FDG. The molecule still functions like glucose in the body and is therefore known as a glucose analog. Now let's take a closer look at the fluorine-18 atom. The only stable isotope of elemental fluorine is fluorine-19 with 9 protons and 10 neutrons. The isotope fluorine-18 is created in a cyclotron and still contains 9 protons but only has 9 neutrons. This isotope is unstable and therefore undergoes radioactive decay. The radioactive fluorine atom emits a positron or a positively charged electron. The positron is antimatter and therefore quickly collides with a nearby negatively charged electron, annihilating both particles and producing two 511 kilo electron volt gamma rays which travel away from each other at 180 degrees. The PET or positron emission tomography scanner can detect these gamma rays and determine where they came from in the body. Again, with the unregulated growth of some of these tumors, the cancer cells will pick up a disproportionate amount of the 18-FDG, allowing us to image this activity on the PET scanner. Tissues that have an increased metabolic activity and use a lot of glucose like the brain and tumor cells are going to show up bright on the PET image. So that's a quick example of how we can use the metabolic characteristics of cancer cells to find tumors in the body. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.